years away I felt the pain of heartbreak And I've seen the brighter days And I pray prayers to heaven From my lowest place And I've held your blessings God, you give and take away No matter what I have Your, your grace is to worship on this cold Florida morning. Um, extra points for all of you who actually got out and are here with us in person, praise team at the earliest possible time when it was still in like the teens or something crazy. Um, but those of you who are joining us online from the warmth of your homes, um, please send us some of that warmth in the comments. Um, let us know that you're worshiping with us and where you are worshiping from. Um, wherever you're joining us from, we are so glad you're joining us. My name is Melissa Cooper. Um, it's my honor to serve as one of the pastors here at St. Luke's. Um, and I am excited to share in worship with you today. It is a privilege to get to worship together um, and to get together, come together each week um, and to give God all of our love with all of our hearts. Now we at, at St. Luke's talk about um, how worship is part of our pattern here, that we learn together, we learn about God together, we live together in community, we share life with one another. Um, and then worship is that time we come together to give all of that back to God, to, to rehearse the patterns of faith um, as we share in praise, go to God in prayer together, give of our resources, listen for God's call on our lives, and be sent forth into the world. So we get to do that together today, and that is a blessing. Be sure that you take out, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, take a moment and fill out your connection cards. If you're here in person, you can use the QR code on the screen or you can get um, a paper card from one of our hosts. If you're online, um, that link is in the comments for you. Um, so you can let us know how we can be in connection with you, how you wanna get more involved in the life of St. Luke's, how we can be in prayer for you. Every single one of those cards gets prayed over every single week. So please let us know how we can be in connection there. Um, you can also always use the St. Luke's Orlando app to fill out your connection card as well. If you're joining us online, please be sure you've grabbed something to eat and something to drink because we will be celebrating the sacrament of communion together today. So be sure that you can join us um, from home as well. Um, and one reminder I want to give now, and I'll also share this at the end of the service um, because it's a really important one. Next week, we are going to have a special opportunity to worship together. Um, we have not had this opportunity in a couple of years because of COVID, but we are getting to join back together to be led in worship by the Bethune-Cookman University's um, choir. And we are very, very excited about this. Um, we will all be worshiping together next week over in the sanctuary um, so that we can do this. Come on in, guys. I think this is First Lakeland. Maybe others. 
All right, so this weekend, there is a bunch of stuff happening over at Universal. Um, we have got lots of youth groups in town, and we've got a lot of youth groups that are joining us for worship this morning. So if you're, not, if you're online, um, there is a, a parade of young people joining us. Um, it's warmer in here than at Universal, right, guys? <laughs> Come on in, come on in, join us. So which churches do we have? We have First Lakeland, I know. Who else do we have? Just First Lakeland. Okay, just kidding. It was just First Lakeland. Welcome First Lakeland. Um, we are excited for you to join us in worship and to offer you some of our warmth and you can share some with us, right? So I was just sharing with everybody our worship for next week, which I don't think you'll be with us next week. Um, but next week we'll be with the Bethune-Cookman um, Chorale over in the sanctuary. We'll all be worshiping together. Um, this is such an honor to get to uh, worship with them and be led by them. Many of you already know what an incredible experience this will be. Um, but if you don't know Bethune-Cookman, Bethune-Cookman is our United Methodist College in Daytona. Um, it is a historically black university and we are proud to have um, our Methodist heritage there. Um, um, as well as it's named after um, the civil rights activist and educator, Mary McLeod Bethune. Um, lots of history there, as well as being the alma mater of our very own pastor, Jeremy Green. And he'll be sharing a word with us um, with them. So it is a week you don't want to miss. Come support these young people as they lead us in worship um, and as we continue to worship together. Um, and so I would say this about any Sunday, but next Sunday is when you really, really don't want to miss. So thank you this week for making worship a priority in your life. Um, and as we worship today, I hope you'll consider what God is calling you into um, this week and what story God is calling you to tell. We're continuing to talk about Jesus throughout this year as we work our way through the Gospels. Um, so I hope that you have found uh, not only a place here in worship, but also a Life Together group or other small group to engage with that throughout the week um, as we join together today. So let's begin worship now um, as we join our hearts together in praising God. Let's stand. Good morning, St. Luke's. Please join me. God, open our minds. Open, open our, our minds to better understand your kingdom, Lord. God, open our ears. Open our ears to hear your call, Lord. God, open our hands. Open our hands to be prepared for your work, Lord. God, open our hearts. Open, open our hearts to be more like yours, Lord. Come, let us worship the God who invites us to new stories. We waited for this day. We gathered in your name, calling out to you. Your glory like a fire, awakening desire will burn. Show us, show us your power, show us, show us your power, show us, show us your glory, Lord. 
Amen. Please join us in this morning's prayer. God, who invites us into new ways of being, invite us into a story that helps us reveal your kingdom. Forgive us when we tell stories with our lives that do not show the world who you truly are. Free us to follow your true calling, transforming us into your true disciples. Amen. I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God cause all my life you have been faithful and all my life you have been so so good in every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire. In darkest nights, you are close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as
in church this morning, y'all. You can be seated if you feel like it. If you are still praising, feel free to keep doing that. But that's a perfect introduction to this moment in worship, this moment where we choose to give of our tithes and our offerings. And each week in worship, we have this moment where we respond to God's faithfulness. We respond to God's goodness in our lives by giving of our resources. And for many of us, especially in the last couple of years, this has been something that we do online. And this has been something that many, many of us, thank you, have, have begun to do as an automatic giving moment, that, that it comes out of your bank account every month. I am grateful that I don't have to remember that, but each week I am called to remember how I am being called to give of myself in this moment. It's a weekly discipline that helps us grow in our faith through the practice of giving of ourselves and of our abundance and our resources. Now for some of us, it's not yet a part of our discipleship practices. It's something that maybe you're working toward. And wherever you are in that spectrum this year, we are kicking off our stewardship campaign. We are kicking off our stewardship opportunities um, to, to, for you to consider how stewardship and giving are going to be this year, how you are going to go deeper in your faith. Now, right now, all around us, the world is preaching a gospel of scarcity, of not enough. <laughs> Everywhere we look, someone is saying there's not enough of something. There's not enough masks. There's not enough tests. There's not enough treatment. There's not enough money because of rising inflation. There's not enough time to do everything. There's not enough love in between each of us. Not enough. That's what we hear everywhere. And yet our God and our Jesus and our gospel tells us there is never a time that there is not enough. Jesus never says there is not enough. Each time we come to a place where disciples ask, how are we going to feed these people? There's not enough. Jesus said there is always enough. And there is. And this week we're looking at Jesus as the great storyteller. And Jesus tells these stories of abundance more than enough. A sower who sows seeds everywhere, even in the places that they're unlikely to grow. God has more than enough to offer. And we can find that there is more than enough in our lives as well. Even if we as individuals are struggling to get by, and we want to acknowledge that is some of you, that is some of the people in our congregation struggling week to week to get by, that, that feeling of not enough goes away when we come together because among us there is more than enough. So I wonder when you might remember a time in your life where you gave something small, maybe out of a time that you felt like there was not enough, and the return was abundant. This year, we're inviting you to step out in faith that way. Each year, we put together a church budget. When we have to put that church budget together on faith, that there will be enough, that, that we collectively will be able to give enough to continue to support the ministries of this congregation and the way that we serve our community. And it's always taking a leap of faith. Um, and each year, there seems to continue to be enough. But it's helpful when we can know how you are jumping in with that leap with us, to know how you are taking that leap of faith with us. So just like last year, we are going to be asking every St. Luker to fill out your estimate of giving. Um, so this is your chance to say, this is what I think I'm going to be able to give this year. Um, if you are ready to do that, you know where you're headed this year. You can go ahead and use the QR code on the screen or the link in the comments. Um, but maybe this is something that you and your family need to pray over over the next few weeks. Um, we've got a few more weeks where we're going to be talking about these estimates of giving. To, to, for us collectively to say, this is how we are going to be faithful as a congregation to support our ministries. Um, if you want a paper card, our hosts have those paper cards to be able to turn in. But we want you to take the time to pray and consider how God is inviting, inviting you to give abundantly this year. Now, so for some of us, that abundance may consist of checking the box that says, I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray for St. Luke's. I have more than enough prayer to give. And that is a gift in and of itself. But for some of us, it's time to take some next steps. It's time to, to, to take that step to give financially maybe for the first time or to start giving regularly for the first time, to, to let that truly be one of your discipleship practices. And we're challenging every St. Luke's this year to increase your giving by $5 per month. 
That's all. $5 per month. So if you haven't been giving, $5 per month. Is that something that you are able to do? If you're currently giving and working toward a tithe, can you go more, $5 more per month towards your tithe? If you're tithing already, can, can you do $5 above your tithe to continue to be faithful in the way that God is calling you to give? However that might be, we want you to prayerfully consider this. This is, this is not a directive. This is not pressure. This is a chance for you and God to talk about how you are using your resources this year and how you're being called to give in 2022. And that question of how will we collectively believe that there is more than enough here at St. Luke's? Now, we still are looking at, at weekly giving, and so if you are, are still considering that estimate of giving, you can also give for this week through the link on the screen, through the link in the comments, um, or through the app. But however it is, um, invite God today to, to ask you and to, to call you to how you are continuing to tell God's story here at St. Luke's, because there are still a lot of stories that we have to tell as a congregation of God's goodness and God's faithfulness. Amen? Amen. The hour is dark And it's hard to see what you are doing here in the ruins and where this will lead oh but i know that down through the years i look at this moment and see your hand on it and know you were And I'll testify of the battles you've won How you were my portion when there wasn't enough And I'll testify of the seas that we've crossed
That song is a prayer in itself as we consider God's faithfulness to each of us and to us as a community. So as a community, let's go to God in prayer together. Oh God, some of us need to hear the words that you continue to be faithful. Because God, you... <laughs> You are telling stories in our lives. There are so many stories here in this space, on the live stream, and among our whole community. And God, we come humbly to you to worship you today and to give of ourselves, but we also come with our hands open asking for your grace. Because around us there are trials and there are challenges and some of us are facing new diagnoses, some of us are facing new seasons without loved ones, some of us are facing challenges with raising children or aging parents. We're facing challenges at school and with friends, challenges with vocational discernment, struggling with your callings. That even, even when around us things seem to be okay, Sometimes there's that turmoil within us. 
And God, we know that in the midst of it all, you are there. You continue to be faithful. You continue to walk with us. We know that in the midst of it, you are calling us to tell a story. But some days it doesn't feel like we have the strength. Some days it doesn't feel like we can see far enough through the fog to be able to move forward. But God, we continue to walk. We continue to walk day by day and step by step, seeking to follow your son, Jesus, and become more like him, even in the trials, as he faced great trials. God, even beyond our own lives, we are challenged to see a way forward. We see conflict emerging internationally. We see countries at odds with one another. We see the threat of violence, the threat of military aggression. All at the same time that we see the world prepare for the Olympic Games, which should be a sign of peace and unity. We see around us still our healthcare workers being overwhelmed by the continuing weight of caring for COVID patients. We see friends and family still struggling with the disease, and we are tired, God. But God, we know that in the midst of it, you sit with us. We know that you are not a separate, objective observer. We know that you are in it with us. You are tired with us. You are fearful with us. You are angry with us. You are grieving with us. You are hopeful with us. God, in the midst of it all, we see the light that is you. We see the light that is you and your son calling us to something greater. We see you fully and wholly walking alongside us, even all the way through despair and death. God, in this moment, open our hearts. Open our hearts that we might receive the grace we come here to ask for. Forgive us when we don't offer that grace in places that we should. But God, first help us receive it for ourselves. Give us open hearts that we can recognize the stories you are writing in our lives that are ones of hope and promise and goodness and faithfulness. And let us discover in ourselves our own strength in walking with you. But even even when our own strength fails us, Let us look to your strength as you continue to carry us through all that we experience. And even in those moments where we aren't sure what the next step to take is, we know that we can pray. And when we don't have the words of our own, we know that we can pray the prayer that your son taught us to pray. As we pray that together now saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Yeah, yeah. So we continue in our in Fort Lauderdale. We had an annual reading plan. Every year we read uh, the Bible and uh, together. And we read four chapters of the Bible a day, every day for 365 days. So we're reading one chapter a week. I think it's a manageable goal, right? We can do this. We can do this. But part of the reason why we're doing it this way is because we want to read it slowly and intentionally. In those years I was in Fort Lauderdale, we were reading quickly, find the the, the thing to write about, find the thing to write about, find the thing to write about. Which in many ways is so unvery faithful to the text. So this year, we're going to slowly read together. And for uh, this time period, one chapter of Mark a week. And I I hope you're also joining us each Sunday night or on our weekly podcast as Dr. E.B. Arnold has shared with us a different aspect, a different perspective of Jesus that that we find in Mark. There are many dimensions of Jesus, amen? And praise the Lord. 
And Mark gives us a perspective of Jesus that, that shows all of these different unique dimensions of the character of Jesus. We found that in, in Mark, there is a rough Jesus who is gritty and physical. He spits a lot. He touches a lot. It's like, hey, man, six feet. Come on now. But then also in chapter 1, we remember our baptism. And then uh, Dr. Eby shared with us the lonely Messiah, that as you go throughout all of Mark, uh, Jesus becomes more and more and more alone. And yet in chapter 2, what we read that week, is that still Jesus gathers people, not only people, but a, a variety of people, unexpected people, overlooked people. And that Jesus has expectations of those who follow. And then last week, as we read chapter 3, the, the rebel Jesus and, and Pastor Jen's call for us to, like Jesus, be rebellious for something, not against something. Be rebellious for the gospel. Be rebellious for the kingdom. Be rebellious for redemption, for healing. Be re rebellious for something. And this week, Dr. Evie shared how Jesus in Mark's gospel is quite emotional, emo Jesus. And for us today, this emotional Jesus in chapter 4 is a storyteller. And that makes sense. A good story brings out emotion, doesn't it? And so an emotional Jesus, like who we find in Mark, brings out emotion as he tells us these stories. Dr. Eby also pointed out that following the expression of emotion, there is action. Jesus does something. He, he's healing, he's teaching, he's bringing about change and transformation. Well, I don't know about you, but I love a good story. And there are so many good stories out there. There's Homer, not Simpson. Iliad and Odyssey guy, remember him? Tolkien, Stephen King, Spielberg, Amanda Gorman, oh, her poetry shares a story that paints a picture that is so vivid and powerful. And of course, there's Lucas, George Lucas, and, and Filoni and Favre now. And yet some of my most favorite stories are your stories. I love meeting people and hearing their story, hear how God is moving in their lives now, or, or hear what has transpired in their lives gone by that has shaped them to be who they are today. You know, early on in seminary while I was serving a little church in the mountains of Georgia, uh, I, I learned that you can get a lot of great stories with simple questions like, so how'd y'all meet? Or what was the name of the first person you loved and how did you fall in love with them? What comes next can bring about some wonderful stories. How'd you get that scar? Why do you always do this or that? Sometimes the stories are, are sad and sometimes they're romantic, often with twists and turns and ups and downs. You all have amazing, great stories. Stories of failure and disappointment. Stories of redemption and strength and reconciliation. You know, sometimes stories have a point and sometimes they don't. And when I was in high school and college, I was a tennis player. One of my tennis coaches is from England and he would love to sit down with you and tell you a joke. He would call it a joke. And it would be typically 8 to 12 minutes long. It would be going on and on and on. And you're waiting for the hook. You're waiting for the punchline. You're waiting for the point. And it gets to the end, and it's really no punchline. It's really no hook. It's really no point. But they are laughing unstoppably. Because we're the joke, right? We sat and listened for 8 to 12 minutes to a point in the story. Sometimes the point is explicit. Yeah, he really wished he had Jesse's girl. We know that. We get it, right? Sometimes it's explicit. It's right in front of your face. But other times it's not so clear. And those are the stories I love the most. The story where it leads you in all kinds of directions. The color, the motif, the setting, the conversation can lead you into a path that you never imagined before, into a place you never thought about before where the points of the story are endless and the lessons keep challenging us when the story keeps living. 
That's one of the reasons why we call this the living word. Because it, it keeps challenging us and testing us, calling us to new places, frustrating us, causing us to examine. And this is what happens in Mark chapter 4 as Jesus begins to tell stories. Jesus began the first chapter, beginning of uh, chapter 4, Jesus began to teach beside the lake again. And such a large crowd gathered that he climbed into a boat there on the lake. He sat in the boat while the whole crowd was nearby on the shore. He said many things to them in parables. See, then Jesus in the rest of chapter 4 proceeds to tell a series of, of three stories. Three stories about seeds. And these stories we call parables. You've heard that word before, I'm sure. A, a, a parable uh, in the time of Jesus, as well as in the time of Mark, is much more of a broad term than it is for us today in English. In first century Greek world, a, a parable is used to refer to all kinds of comparison narratives, allegory, sayings, proverbs, riddles even, and especially parables. And a little side note commercial at Pints and Parables, y'all are welcome, every Thursday night, we take this broad approach to parables just like Jesus. So after the first seed parable, Jesus gives a guide to how to think about it. And then he says in Mark chapter 4, verse 21, Jesus said to them, does anyone bring in a lamp in order to put it under a basket or a bed? Shouldn't it be placed on a lampstand? Everything hidden will be revealed and everything secret will come out into the open. Whoever has ears to listen should pay attention. It seems that Jesus, this storyteller, is telling these stories for a reason, to shed light. And that is, after all, what Jesus does in all of our lives. Jesus, the light of the world, sheds light in all our dark places. It might make us uncomfortable. It might make us feel vulnerable. But the loving God, Christ Jesus, sheds light into all of the dark places of our lives. And that is what a parable does, especially the parables of Jesus so if you were to look it up, you would see that parable means alongside. And there is so much coming alongside the story. So much coming alongside these parables of Jesus. You would also know that, that parables are intended to be open-ended. Those great and powerful stories that, that open the possibilities as opposed to narrow them down. Parables, you see, they invite reflection rather than definition. One of the jokes that happens often on Thursday nights at Pints and Parables is there'll be a powerful discussion going on for 30, 45 minutes, and somebody will say, well, Jad, do we get it right? And everyone laughs because we understand that there's no right, there's no wrong, there's, there's what we have before us and how God leads us through it, how the Holy Spirit causes us to think about it, to think about how we can be changed and transformed. But that's not what we want. We, we want it in a box, nice and Tidy, we want the answer. Two plus two is what? I don't, give us the answer, please. Jesus doesn't give an algebraic problem with, with simply just one answer or one, one outcome. Jesus tells us stories that invite us to look deeper and see. Jesus tells us stories that invite us to, to listen further and hear Jesus tells us stories that invite us to begin to journey once again, to begin to understand the depth and breadth of the kingdom of God, which is all around us. Kingdom of God, which is both in plain sight, you hear Jesus say a lot in chapter four, whoever has ears to listen, pay attention, and also so very complicated dynamic and complex. The kingdom of God stories of Jesus, these, these parables of Jesus invite us to enter into a new way of thinking and a new way of living. They invite us 
to wrestle with inherited ideas that we come to discover are so hateful and toxic. They invite us to to gain perspective from somebody we would have never paid attention to before and found of no worth and value. Why on earth would a Samaritan be good, Jesus? They invite us to have conversation and community as opposed to being steeped in isolation. To rely on one another, to share perspective, to gain insight, to rely on one another and the Spirit to find depth and meaning that leads to transformational living. You see, the parables of Jesus, within them there is a potential for anything and everything. The potential is exponential. Jesus, the divine storyteller, is telling stories to speak a deeper truth, deeper than any folk tale, deeper than any romantic comedy, deeper than any science fiction fantasy as much as we love them, more poignant than any satirical dark comedy, deeper truths that shed light onto who you are of infinite worth and value. Deeper truths that reveal more and more who God is, a loving creator of all things, who longs for God's kingdom to come in you and in your living here and now. Deeper truths these parables call us to that move us to more transformational living, that lead us to sharing our story of transformation. So I'm going on that y'all have read chapter four. Rock the Universe crew, you're excused. The first seed parable is often called the parable of the soils. And it tells of an extravagant sower an extravagant farmer who throws the seed anywhere and everywhere. The seed lands on four different soils, and Jesus says that the seed is the word of God, which we know from John that the word of God is Jesus. The second parable is about the unknowing farmer, the unknowing sower who sows seeds but does not know how things grow, yet delights in the harvest. The third parable is that of the mustard seed, a very small seed that becomes a large tree that shelters many, provides home and comfort and safety. I wonder what deeper truth Jesus the divine storyteller is calling you to today. I wonder what transformational living Jesus, the storyteller, is calling you to today and what story you might tell. I wonder what it would look like for each of us to take Jesus, the word made flesh, deep into the soil of our souls. I wonder what it would look like that if we too were extravagant sowers of the grace and love of Jesus, spreading and sharing, speaking the grace and love of Jesus anywhere and everywhere through our story, not knowing how the seeds grow, yet delighting in its beauty and harvest, living in in awe and wonder at how something that is seemingly small And in the course of a day, in this world, insignificant, can grow to become so very significant, so very transformational. What's the point of Jesus' story calling you to today? And what story will you tell? Jesus gathered 
with his disciples. And they remembered a story, a story of, of great liberation, the Passover meal. Within that storytelling, there's images, but there's also things you touch and feel and taste. And they remembered, they were called the mighty acts of God. And when that supper was over, Jesus took a loaf of bread. He gave thanks to God and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat all of you. This is my body broken for you. Feed on your heart with thanksgiving and praise. And he took the cup. He gave thanks to God. And he gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is the cup of a new covenant. A new story that I'm telling into your lives. A greater redemption. An eternal living. My blood poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. That you might live free, live eternally, and live to tell the story of God's mighty acts of salvation in you. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be, O oh God, the body and blood of Christ. That we might be the body and blood of Christ in this world. By your spirit, O oh God, make us one with each other and one with you and one in ministry to all the world until we feast at your heavenly banquet. All oh, honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. You are invited, if you're in this space, uh, to take off the first level of our wonderful packs here and eat the bread. And those of you worshiping at home, your crackers or bread or whatever you have prepared, you're welcome to now take and eat that bread, the body of Christ broken for you. And then here in the space, uh, carefully pull off the second layer to reveal the juice. And those at home, whatever water or juice you have prepared, for you to take and now drink the blood of Christ shed for you. That you might remember you might taste and know God's story and you might live it in your life. Amen. Just ask the waves they are stilled at the mention of his name They'll say my God is still the same Ask the walls If they still fall at the mighty sound of praise They'll say my God is still the same When did he break his promise? When did his kindness fail? Never has, never will my God is still the same. When did he lose his power? When did his mercy change? Never has, never will. My God is still the same. Yeah. My God is still the same. Just ask the words you pray in desperation if they're heard they'll say my God is still the same ask the brave if it's strong enough to keep hope in its chains it'll say God is still the same yeah when did he break his promise when did his kindness fail never has never will my God
once has he ever let go? Not once did he ever stop proving our God is in control. When did he break his promise? When did his time they sail? Never has, never will. My God is still the same. When did he lose his power? When did his mercy change? Never has. stand uh, and as we prepare to sing our closing song I, I hope this worship service has resonated deeply with your heart and soul not only myself but the worship team all the pastors uh, that, that you you might engage with the great stories of life and faith and especially those that Christ is telling you and that you might live that story so lift your voices and sing with us as we sing about this God who is a way maker. Because so oftentimes we see the things that get in the way of living more fully in who God's created us to be. We see the things that get in the way of us understanding how we can share our story more fully in our living. We see the things that get in the way from us living a transformed life. So let's sing this proudly together. I worship you, I worship you, you are here working in this place, I worship you, I worship you, you are great maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. You are here, touching every heart. I worship you.
This is one of those weeks where I never feel like it's fair that I have to talk after they <laughs> sing yeah. because we have experienced God's presence this Amen. week. We have experienced God's presence in this place, and I pray that you will take seriously that call that worship is our rehearsal for the rest of our lives. So take all of the, yes, <laughs> take all of this. What you felt here today, what you experienced, what you heard from God here today. And let this be how you continue throughout your week because we are starting a new week with St. Luke's tonight. We will have Bible study this evening. If you don't join us um, on Zoom for Bible study, the podcast will come out tomorrow as we continue to journey through Mark together. And I wanna, I wanna say to you, this experience is even more powerful when you do all of those other pieces. When you are engaging with us, learning more about the text, um, learning more about the context, living that together. So please, please consider how that pattern fits into your life this year. And then we will wrap up this week again next Sunday and keep the praise going with the Bethune-Cookman Chorale Ooh. next Sunday. Yeah. Do not forget. You will want to be here for this. We are live streaming it, but it is not the same um, as being in person. So please be with us if you can next Sunday. Um, all in the sanctuary. We'll all be together at 915 um, to enjoy and to worship together with the Bethune-Cookman Chorale. Now lift your faces and receive this benediction. And now may the grace and love of Jesus Christ, the divine storyteller, continue to resonate in your heart and your soul that you will go from this place, not only claiming the, the story that God's speaking into your life, but proclaiming that story to all you meet. Amen. Mm -hmm.